May only the truth be spoken and may only the truth be heard in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace in our time, O Lord. Let me echo the sentiments of the Collect for today. O Lord, be our strength in the times of our belief and be our hope in the times of our doubt. And may we who have not yet seen have faith that your blessing of peace will indeed come. This has indeed been my prayer now for over a year, ever since the war in Ukraine started by a tyrant and power-hungry dictator, even until now. And it seems like there is no real end in sight, doesn't it? I've always struggled as well with the world's response and indeed our own country's response to this geographically isolated war. The war is not physically close to us, but it is an attack on the very principles that we hold dear around democracy or goodwill, justice, and even our baptismal covenant to respect the dignity of every human being. I am a supporter in that we need to fight the fights that need to be fought in order that we stand with the victims of this world. Canada's recent assistance to Ukraine is in the form of money and weapons, which includes thousands of assault rifles, dozens of machine guns, and millions of rounds of ammunition to help Ukrainian soldiers fight the Russian soldiers. And I realized the first time that I heard these details, and it sinks in even deeper every time I say it, that with every weapon given, every bomb deployed, and every bullet fired, which have been supplied by us, is our participation in the death of another human being. Whether they be friend or foe, let us not rejoice in any of this. It is all tragic. You've heard me say this before, and I will say it once again. God does not want this violence to happen. This isn't the way God wants it. God didn't want Jesus' death either. And to describe Jesus' death as a sacrifice for sin is to get it all wrong. God hates sacrifices, not animals, and definitely not my son. I have had enough of your sacrifices and burnt offerings, says the Lord. I take no delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs. Incense is an abomination to me, and my soul hates your appointed feasts. I am weary of bearing them. Strong language from God through the prophet Isaiah. God desires steadfast love and not sacrifice. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. From Hosea 6 and Psalm 51 from our Ash Wednesday service. God's redemption of the human spirit is not achieved by sacrifice at all, and especially not animals. And the disgrace of the crucifixion is nothing close to a plan of redemption because redemption has nothing to do with human beings. 
and has everything to do with God. We might be able to say, then, at the very least, the self-sacrifice of Jesus by Jesus himself constitutes perhaps the only thing that contributes to our understanding or of redemption and our humanity that participates in it because with Jesus' very last breath, he is still teaching us what it means to give of ourselves for the sake of another. First, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Then he gave his life as a ransom for many, namely the whole human race. And once Jesus' life is given and comes to an end, God redeems that horrific mistake by giving back Jesus his life, namely through what we celebrate as resurrection. Peter says from Acts 2, But God raised him up, having freed Jesus from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in death's power. The bounds of Jesus' influence now have become limitless. Not even the bonds of death could hold Jesus back, nor could it hold back the influence of the Holy Spirit, which we're celebrating soon enough. Jesus, by God's action, and only God's action is free to influence the whole world. So when we get to the gospel for today, we see the determination of both Jesus and his disciples, including Thomas, to accomplish great things. And the greatest of these things is peace through love. Jesus breathes peace be with you to the disciples three times to solidify their ultimate mission in the world. And it would be accomplished by the new commandment that Jesus would give them. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Remember that one? Well, it's also backed up by servanthood in Jesus' example of service by washing their feet. So, my friends, how do we get to the place that no longer supplies weapons and ammunition to the place where we become the advocates for peace and let that be our testimony to both Ukraine and Russia of our resolve to find peaceful and just solutions, yes, to what we know is a very complicated political issue. Well, I think that it begins with us sharing what we know to be true about our life experience of both death and resurrection, brokenness and redemption, love and peace. And it begins with us, of course, and filters and, and flows through us to the places where the great healing needs to take place. And it starts in our families and our friends, and then on to the communities where we live, and then on to the province and the country, and finally to the whole world. Now from the song written by Jill Jackson Miller and Cy Miller way back in 1955 and originally sung by the International Children's Choir. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Try giving that song a listen. Vince Gill does a good job of it too. Amen? Amen. <laughs>